and welcome back to my channel Gabapedic. In last week's video I did my top 5 habits slash tips for managing celiac disease. If you didn't see that I'll link it in the description down below. So today it's only fair to do my top 5 habits slash tips for managing type 1 diabetes. If you watch my channel you'll know that I've been type 1 diabetic for about 14 years now which is a very long time. So I'm making this video to share the things that have helped me in the last 14 years and made my journey with type 1 diabetes that little bit easier. I hope you like the video. If you do please give it a thumbs up and if you're new here please consider subscribing to the channel. But let's get started on the video and let's start with tip number one. Okay, so my first tip is to keep your hypo treatment for low blood sugars in lots of different places. Have a treatment beside your bed, in your bag, in your car, at work, in a different room of the house, at a friend's house. Honestly, this tip is really important and it's been a lifesaver for me. For example, beside my bed, I have my Lucozade and I also have an emergency gel in case I am really low blood sugar when I wake up and need it. I can't stress enough how important this is. There's been many times where I've been really low and needed something really fast and I just don't have the energy or the time or the mental capacity to go looking for Lucozade or whatever your hypo treatment is. Also, it's very easy to leave the house and forget your hypo treatment. How many times have I left the house thinking I have a sugary drink or glucose tablets in my bag and then I've gotten out in the car and I've realized, oh no, I don't have anything. And that feeling is really horrible because you start to be worried then if you have a low blood sugar, what will you do? So this has saved me so many times. I keep my bedside hypo treatment. I have something in my car. I have one in another room of the house. I have something in my bag. And I also had something in my drawer desk at work when I was working on site. And it's just so handy if you forget, if you run out, it just honestly can save your life so many times. And it just takes the worry away of if you have a low blood sugar, what you'll do. So definitely a really important tip. Also, I will say if you have an emergency treatment like a glucagon injection, keep that at different places if you can. For example, keep one here if you're allowed to at work or school. When I was in school many years ago, I had one in the fridge in the school in case something happened to me there. So also another important point to make, keep any emergency like injections or anything for the really bad hypo treatments in different places if you can as well. Okay, so number two, type 1 diabetes revolves heavily around counting the carbohydrates in food so that you know how much insulin to take. My tip is make best friends with weighing scales. Get yourself a digital weighing scales and it will make your life so much easier. It is incredibly hard to estimate the amount of carbs in food by just looking at it. And when you have like a big weighing scales, it's just difficult to weigh it out and you can't get that accuracy. I got this one on Amazon and I don't think it was too dear, like 10 pounds. You could do mils, you could do grams and you could change it for like milk or water. It's just made my life so much easier. For example, if I have it there in the kitchen when I wake up in the morning, just put my bowl down, pour my cereal into it, weigh the grams of cereal, then I can really quickly work out the carbohydrates. Or if I'm making like pasta for dinner and the weighing scales there, again, put the bowl on it, put the pasta in, easy to work out the carbohydrates. Having that weigh scales gives so much more accuracy for carbohydrate counting and helps control like going high or going low because it's so hard to estimate by just looking at a food how much carbohydrate is in it. So this has really improved my HbA1c. Before I was just guesstimating going high, going low. Having this now I can really accurately carb count and I've just improved it so much. HbA1c at the moment is 6.5% which I'm really, really happy with. And uh, yeah, a lot of it is down to proper carbohydrate counting. There is a book called Carbs and Cows. I don't have it myself, but it actually shows pictures of the food. So you could look at the different portion sizes and use the picture to read if you don't want to get a weighing scales or if you don't have a weigh scale. For example, it might show like one scoop of mashed potato in a picture and show you how much carbs for that, or like three scoops in a picture and how much carbs that is. So definitely worth a look if you don't want to get a weighing scales. <laughs> So tip number three is to not be afraid to tell people that you are a type one diabetic. I know some people have some apprehension around this and I have in the past when like starting in a new social situation like a job or something like that where you're new and you don't know whether to bring it up or not. I always tell people no matter if it's a new job or a new friend or something like that, I always tell them that I'm type one diabetic and I'm happy to do this. I feel more reassured when people know just in case something happens. It just reassures me to know that if I did pass out from a low blood sugar that people know what's going on and how to help me in the right way. Also, if you tell people, people can recognize the signs of low blood sugars. For example, everyone in my job knows, so I'm able to just 
leave and go get some sugar if I need to or anything like that and then I don't have to re-explain to everyone what's happening. It's up to you of course if you tell people or not. I always do and it has made my life so much easier. Don't get me wrong it has been a bit nerve-wracking in new situations with new people but I find once you have that first conversation and tell them I'm type 1 diabetic they might have like a few questions for you and then that's really it. Then they kind of know and no one really brings it up again. So that's how it's been for me. I always find it really good to tell the people you're with that you are type 1 diabetic. My habit number four then is to do injecting. If you watch my channel, you'll know that I use Nova Rapid Insulin. And a new habit that I found this year, this is probably my newest habit that I've started to take up, is to pre-bolus. Pre-bolus is when you have your meal ready and you know your carbohydrate counts, take your insulin 10 to 15 minutes before you eat. So this helps control that rise in blood glucose from the food because the insulin will start to work at the same time. And hopefully then you won't get that huge spike where like normally it would be eating the food, huge spike, then the insulin works and comes down. It's just kind of like a normal line. Like they work together, the food breaks down and the insulin works at the same time. Of course, I'm not a doctor. So if you are making any changes to your insulin plan, talk to your doctor or nurse first. I did that before I started doing anything with my Nova Rapid. I used to take my Nova Rapid just when I had my food there in front of me and then I just always was getting this spike and then it was coming back down. So now I'm in better control that I pre-bolus. That spike has just leveled out to a flat line where the insulin and the food are working at the same time. But yeah, it's definitely a good tip but always do talk to your doctor before you make any changes just to make sure you know exactly what you're doing and the type of insulin that you have and stuff will work for this method. <laughs> Finally, habit number five is about blood sugars. My biggest change in habit has been to take more blood sugar readings, whether that's via the CGM that I have on here or using my blood glucose monitor. I use this a lot and I've used it for many years before I had a CGM. I used to not take as many blood sugar readings. I was kind of afraid in the past. I only really took readings on this monitor before I had a CGM at meal times which was like four or five times a day. And in between that, I had no, no clue like what was going on with my blood sugars because I just never check. It's gotten a bit better now that I have the CGM. I test a lot more regularly. But even if you do have just a monitor, my suggestion is to test more regularly. Even if you're seeing readings that you don't want to, it just really helps give an overall picture. And this is also how I've brought my HbA1c down so much in the last two years. Two or three years ago, I was only checking four times a day. Now I'm checking like 10 or 12 times a day. I'm seeing a way better graph of what's going on in my body. And I can see trends, like I can see after my dinner, two hours later, I might get a little rise and then that might go down or I need some insulin to take that. I know a lot more about my blood glucose readings in my body. So it has massively helped and I think will really help with HbA1c control. So yeah, my tip is to definitely test your blood glucose regularly, more than just the meal times. Test in between, test before bed. If you wake up in the middle of the night, sometimes like I do, test then, see what's going on. It will honestly help you get a really good picture of what's going on in your body and that will help you control your HbA1c a lot better. It has for me, honestly, it's brought my HbA1c down so much. Okay, so that's the end of the video. My top five habits and tips for managing type 1 diabetes. As I said before, make sure you talk to a doctor if you're making any major changes. These are just the things that helped me in the 14 years, the things that I figured out that have made managing type 1 diabetes a lot easier. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down any other tips that you have down below. I'd love to see them as well. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're celiac too, like me, check out my top five habits or tips for managing celiac disease. I'll link it down below. Other than that, I will see you all in next week's video.